So it's been a little while since my last video, and I'm sure some people are wondering where have I been? Well, apart from using my 617 view camera and enjoying the hell out of it, um, I've also been sort of working off in the background um, on an adjustment tool. So there was a fair amount of interest from some people uh, after I launched my last video uh, wanting to make their own. And so I thought long and hard about it, and then I decided, well, if I'm going to do it, I should do it right. So I went back into Fusion and pulled up the model and I went from the beginning of the camera all the way to the end and pretty much adjusted and tweaked and fixed every single part of the camera. I don't think there's a single element in the camera that hasn't had some form of work done on it to produce a camera that it's at a level that I'm happy to sell to the public. And so with that, I'm officially announcing that the EB617 Mark II view camera is now officially available for sale on my website thefilmlaundry.com. I decided to break it up into a different, few different ways um, of selling the camera. Um, you can download just the 3D models and purchase just the 3D model alone um, and you will get a zip file with literally every single part um, of the camera 3D modeled and ready to go to be printed on your printer of choice. It will pretty much print on just about any standard consumer home printer um, with even an average bed size. Um, obviously the larger the bed size the easier it can be for certain parts and you have less worry about how to position them um, but I've been able to print it on a couple of different printers uh, with no problem whatsoever. So you've got the 3D parts um, as the first step and that's for someone who really just wants to get into it and basically really enjoys the process of tinkering and producing their own, uh, their own gear. Then on top of that, um, I've got a separate section, which is the hardware. Now, as well as the 3D files, and there's about 45 separate individual parts from memory uh, for the camera, there are quite a lot of screws, nuts, bolts, knobs, gears, etc., to go along with the 3D parts uh, to produce a fully functional camera. Uh, they are all generally available bits and pieces, and the 3D, uh, uh, 3D files does come with a list of every single part that you would need to source. But for some people who don't want to go through the hassle of sourcing each individual screw, nut, knob, etc., um, I will be selling a kit that contains every single piece of hardware that you'll need along with the 3D parts to produce a camera. So that's all of the gears, all the rods, the knobs, the springs, a lot of screws, um, the heat sets to go into your 3D, 3D printed parts, all of those elements, uh, as well as a dark slide. The only elements that don't come in that kit would be the ground glass and the bellows. For those of you who want to make ground glass, I have a, a video uh, which is linked within as part of the kit that uh, shows you how to make ground glass custom for this camera, which is a fairly simple process um, and really only takes about 15 minutes once you get started. But for those of you who don't want to uh, make your own ground glass, I'm also offering that as an option for purchase. Um, as you would have seen on my website uh, recently, I also have a video on how to make bellows. Then finally, I felt it's probably only fair that I offer a fully built camera as well. For those people who don't want to deal with 3D printing, don't know how to 3D print, or just they want a fully functional 617 view camera style camera, um, without actually having to go through all the hassle of producing it themselves, but also they don't want to spend the significant money on some other view cameras, which will remain nameless. So I'll be selling uh, fully uh, uh, printed cameras, uh, fully assembled. Literally all you have to do is add a lens and you are good to go. The last uh, single addition I've also added to the website is during my tech building of my previous camera, you'll note that I used uh, uh, 3D printed aluminium for certain parts of the camera uh, for structural rigidity. After that, I decided to do some testing and I purchased a new, a new printer uh, that's capable of printing carbon fiber filament. And I found with some tweaks and adjustments to the model as well, um, the carbon fiber uh, uh, 3D printing for certain, the, the certain parts, mainly the, the uh, front and rear standard uh, uh, brackets, the carbon fiber is well within close, close tolerances to the aluminium that you can pretty much use them instead of aluminium and have a fully functioning camera quite happily. In fact, when I was doing my testing, even PLA printed gets you 95% of the way there, um, but just if you want to get really rigid and structural rigid components for, the, um, for those front and rear standard risers, then carbon fiber is probably your best bet. 
That being said, carbon fibre is not the easiest thing to print um, and it can sometimes take a little while to dial it in. So for those people who perhaps don't have a 3D printer that's capable of printing carbon fibre or they don't want to have to deal with the carbon fibre, I'm also offering the front and rear standard uh, risers purely the, by themselves printed in carbon fibre so that someone could print off the rest of the camera uh, using standard PLA on a regular home printer, add the carbon fibre rear and front uh, standard uh, brackets and that way they have the best of both worlds. So now I think it's probably a good idea to quickly run you through some changes that I've uh, made to the design of the camera since you last saw it. Here we have a fully uh, production ready version of the camera. And as I said, I went from the front standard all the way to the rear standard and tweaked just about every part. The first major change I've made is to the front standard. Uh, previously, I had the two knobs here and here um, that would allow you to control the rise as well as the tilt of the camera. Um, and you had to unscrew one if you wanted to tilt. And it was a little bit of a faff, a little bit annoying. Um, and it, in using it, you're not using tilt a lot, but when you are, it started to get very annoying. So I've changed to this design where you've actually just got two little locking items here, which literally just slide out and then immediately you can tilt your lens. But once you lock them back in place, the rise and fall stays straight. So if you want to just do rise and fall, it's very easy to do rise and fall without really doing anything other than un undoing these two bolts, moving up and down. But if you want to do tilt as well, undoing these lock panels makes it significantly easier to control your rise fall tilt of your front standard. I also adjusted some small sections around the front, uh, the way the standard uh, attaches to the base, with, which helps with some structural rigidity. Over to the rear. There hasn't been a heck of a lot of change in terms of how the rear functions, um, more just changes to the design to make it uh, better for 3D printing. I've added a fair amount of thickness to the base standard so that if you're not printing it in aluminium, and you can still, if you want to, send off certain parts of the, the 3D models to get them printed in 3D in aluminium if you would want to. So you could print the vast majority of the camera yourself and then send off, say, the front and the rear standard brackets off to a company to be printed in aluminium or titanium even if you wanted to. If, however, you are going to print them in PLA or carbon fiber, the design of this has changed slightly. It is significantly thicker, which gives you a little bit more structural rigidity. I've also added things like there's a stand for the camera so that if you want to actually display your camera um, or just when you're working on your camera, it will sit without rocking back and forth because of the integrated arca plate on the base. So that's just about it. Um, I'm really keen to see what people um, think of the design. Uh, I do know that there was uh, there were some people who were talking to me and they were suggesting the possibility that they wanted to 3D print say all the gearing sections and so on but actually build the front and rear standard and so on um, out of timber which I think is amazing and if I had woodworking skills and I had woodworking tools and the, the ability to do it two bedroom apart apartments really aren't the best place to do woodworking I would certainly uh, give that a go um, so that they can get sort of a, a combination of your standard timber look for a view camera whilst using, utilizing 3D printing for all of the gearing and so on for your front and rear standard. Um, and also I th there were a few people out there who were talking about printing in different, different uh, types of materials. You can get different colored um, PLA, obviously. There is a, even a wood style or a wood grain style PLA. So I'm really excited to see what people think. So the site's live now. Um, you can go ahead and purchase uh, any of the, the items on there as we speak. Um, there is a between 30 and 60 day uh, um, time limit at the moment on shipping, purely because January it's um, still very uh, quiet and you know some of my suppliers are still getting back into full production. Um, that is the worst case scenario. Ideally, uh, items would ship generally in about two to three weeks. So hopefully um, I get to hear a lot of people's uh, thoughts and opinions on, on how the camera is and, and then hopefully it'll get far more people out there using 617 view cameras because up until now, there's really only been one option that we all know of. And that has been a very expensive option that's only been getting more expensive year upon year upon year. And I think with the advents of things like 3D printing and so on, um, we should be seeing prices going down, not up. So hopefully uh, this will get more cameras into the hands of more users 
and that's just an exciting thing. So in the meantime, say hi to your dog for me. <laughs>